but the the school calendar year we start before three years later we go back to a post labor day start i don't think that's a a good good um kind of system to to do each year we're swinging back and forth because i think as folks are talking about the planning for vacations trips with families that kind of back and forth it wouldn't be helpful as well i don't think um in the planning process of that but um i am leaning towards the option b uh, and it's for me it's purely a an equity piece making sure that all of our students um, that are at risk have the same opportunities to to be at the same level same opportunities as all of our students in the system thanks so um, there's been a lot of discussion and question on this issue and one of the questions that I've gotten frequently from people is um, where's the school board or what's the decision going to be in terms of what you guys are going to do and to date what I've answered has been our only decision so far has been is we will definitely start school at some point so <laughs> I feel that we're all in agreement that we will start school next fall um, so that's kind of been you know there's been a lot of information that's come in and um, done a lot of conversation and I think that the comments I had and their comments more than questions were just regarding the process and um, how I think that this has kind of taken on a life of its own and there's obviously been a lot of input. And so I guess the one thing from a process standpoint is I think it would have been really helpful if there'd been some sort of checkpoints, I guess, with the board to have the board ask any questions or clarify anything as we went along just because I think it would have been really helpful and hopefully would have cut down on a lot of, um, I guess, the outbreak of questioning of the dates and why the committee chose this and why they chose that. Um, and I just think that if there had been the checkpoints, the board could have asked the questions, why, you know, first of all, clarifying that the June 15th wasn't a hard stop date. Oh, well, okay, now I understand why the committee decided you know to stick to that so I think that that has caused a lot of problems in terms of the community asking for why not the August 31st date and trying to clarify that um, so I applaud the effort for transparency and to have all this discussion around it but I think at the same time I think it also created kind of I guess more um, of an issue than it probably should have been because I think it is pretty straightforward when Dr. Noonan talks about the elements of the pre-Labor Day option B, why it benefits our students, and at the end of the day, this is a really an issue about academics um, and, of course, equity. So I think that you know focusing on those, um, again, the checkpoints with the board would have been really helpful. And I think one other thing with regard to the checkpoints with the board was um, the survey and I think one of the things that I've heard both from the community but also from other board members is there was some valuable data that we would have liked to have seen in the survey and that was a breakout by either by school by grade by age of the children the families staff etc cetera, et cetera. because I think that one of the points that has been made is that you know when you do have those middle school and especially high school kids you have a much deeper understanding of what it means with regard to the IB and AP courses. And so I think that that significantly impacts the high school population more and you know there's a lot more weight put on it. So I think it would have been really helpful to see that at least parental data broken out, um, not just for the board, but also for the community. Um, so again, that's just some process comments that I had. And then one last thing is I did have a chance to talk with the vice chair of the Arlington public school school board um, and they're actually not voting until I believe she said mid-January and so while I do think that it would have been great if we could have been you know had this decision reached earlier we are certainly not the last ones out of the gate so thank you madam chair so I also want to echo folks and say thank you to the committee members and thank you to um, all the folks that were involved in gathering input through that process. Um, I also want to say thank you to the community, uh, and I'm sort of trying to figure out which camera to look at when I say that, but 
Um, we have had a really robust response. I think that survey numbers certainly are robust, but we've also had a lot of emails and people stopping folks on the street to have chats. And it's been a, it, this has been a really, uh, a lot of input that's really helped in the, in the thinking process and trying to make sure we, we sort of have a pulse of what, uh, what's important to the folks in the community when they're trying to make uh, decisions about this. For me, um, there's some things in, the, in, the, in those emails that I think we should capture for future years in addition to the idea that maybe doing a, ca a calendar every couple of years for a two-year cycle as opposed to a one-year cycle might make sense. But there were some other things about um, comments in there that we should take a look at in terms of, of dates for do we start on, for instance, the same, I don't want to say date, but day of the month. Like, do we start always start on the nth day of whatever month or, you know, whatever? Or do we have spring break be floating as opposed to attached with Easter? This sort of a question mark has been there. Or do we have it as it's a fixed period in the year? So I think it'd be useful just to look at some of that for, for future years. It's not something that goes into um, really my thinking for this year, though. Um, I would say that for me, the biggest single question is um, what is going to have the best outcome for the most students that we, we can serve? And I'm thinking in particular of the students who um, would benefit from extra time prior, prior to assessments, but also just extra time for learning overall, um, you know, before those assessment happens and also to get started on the year. So for me, it's a question of what is the, it is that equity piece, really. Um, being able to support the students that, that will benefit the most, to help them achieve the level of achievement that they can get to with that extra help that will bring them up. And to me, that leans towards um, starting earlier rather than later. So that's really kind of the, the biggest the biggest driver for me, I will note also, looking at the numbers, one of the things I did slicing and dicing those numbers was, um, uh, adding up parents and students together and adding and looking at the staff, sort of sort of like as a proxy for families, parents and students, as a proxy for staff, you know, looking at the staff numbers, it's starkly different, right? The, the obvious on the slide, but 80-20 staff favors a pre-Labor Day start. And it's pretty close to even, but not quite, on a post-Labor Day, pre-Labor Day for families. Um, I look at that and I think, who in the set of folks who responded to the survey can, is in a best position to help us answer that question of what will help students achieve their best, achieve the best that they can. And it's their, their teachers and it's the folks that are in the schools and the staff that have their hands on the pulse of what will help our students learn. So I, I look at that difference and, and I just, I lean towards the, uh, the earlier start as well. One question that we did talk about, um, but it's useful to have the additional information on the 31st of August um, option because we have heard a lot about that. And um, knowing that, that the, commu the committee looked at it and the committee made the decision that that was not an option that they um, felt was viable, I think is actually a really helpful piece of just to make sure that that's known and understood. Um, and so having that is, is really good there. Um, and I, the other thing that struck me is um, whether or not in all of the information that we have, um, we might have had information, we might still be missing people. People who are, for instance, afraid to take a survey, even if it's an anonymous survey, for whatever reason. Or people who are afraid to send emails to reach out to, to the school board or to send emails to the calendar for whatever reason. And so. Um, what is the voice that we're not hearing as a result of that? And where does that land in the, the range of our community? I, I don't know the answer to that. How do you hear silence? Um, but it's a question that, that weighs on me a bit. So in the end, um, I'm also in, in favor of the, the pre-Labor Day start. Um, and um, because I think in the end, it will, uh, it will give the, the best chance to have students achieve the best that they can uh, and, and especially for those students who um, need the extra support uh, to achieve that. So, Great. Madam Chair, can I comment? Um, yeah, sure. To, just to kind of, um, first of all, thank you all so far for your comments. We appreciate um, getting the feedback. I, I did want to let you know 
Um, I think there is a lot of information that can be harvested from those emails, and we'll we'll go through and scrub those and see what can be um, harvested to future um, calendars. Um, you know, you, you wrestle sort of existentially a little bit about what is the best for students and who has their hands on it. Um, and I do think it's our teachers that have their hands on um, how our students uh, and what our students need a, a lot when it comes to school. Um, but I was struck by a conversation that Mr. Bates and I were having earlier today. Um, and some of you have toured the schools on the first day of school. You know, when you walk through the halls on the first day of school, within 10 minutes, five minutes, kids are in class and kids are learning. And I think about that on September 5th or September 8th. And then I think about it 10 days before that, 10 school days. And that's, that's 10 times seven and a half hours. That's 75 more hours of instruction that is useful time that these kids would be in class. Um, and I, I, I really feel like, you know, I wouldn't be doing my job as an educator if I wasn't advocating on behalf of kids. Um, so I really, I feel, I feel strongly that, you know, that additional 75 hours of instruction that we can provide to kids actually will have a significant difference, uh, make a significant difference in their, their learning outcomes. Thank you, Dr. Newton. So as always, as go last, and <clears throat> everyone has already said everything I would say. Um, so thank you again to the committee, to everyone who worked on it, the community. Um, you know, my number one priority is doing what's best for students and instruction, always. Um, I am also a family member, a family who's booked vacation, and it doesn't matter though. That's not my vacation, doesn't control um, what goes on. It's, again, it's what's best for students. Um, and, you know, I, I can make those changes um, so that our kids can get that extra learning time. Um, I echo um, Mr. Anderson's comments that I think there are voices of parents and kids who need that extra instruction who weren't heard in the survey and are not heard in our calendar emails and don't show up to it, meetings. Um, and I think it's really important that we take that into consideration. I know um, people who sit on the board of the Family Resource Center do hear from those families. And, you know, they strongly prefer more instruction time, um, even if their voices aren't going to show up in um, our survey data today. Um, I also would give more weight to staff preference. They do know the kids best, and they know what um, students need more than any of the rest of us do. Um, uh, I would also echo uh, Mr. Webb. Um, if we move to a pre-Labor Day start, um, actually I'm kind of agnostic as to if we do it, if we move back and forth, um, but I think that if we are gonna move to a pre-Labor Day start and we don't have that certainty anymore, we definitely need to do a two-year at a time calendar. I know um, uh, DC Public Schools does a three-year calendar, which is a lot, um, but two years um, I think would be really beneficial since Labor Day does move around a lot, so that starting a week or two beforehand could really make a huge impact on um, families and their planning, whether it's for camps, which require you to register and pay money in January, um, or vacation homes that you have to book a whole full year in advance. Um, one other question I have is around um, Inauguration Day. Um, if we still need to take that off since surrounding districts have not taken it off, I know the teacher work day prior to that day um, is important, um, but my question if we still need to take the holiday then, so maybe taking that two-day break, I mean, that's an operational thing I would leave to you to consider, um, but the, again, that does, it is difficult, I think, for parents, and then if we're doing equity concerns, we've just taken a two-week break, I think it's really hard for some of our families to then plan for another three days of childcare they need to find, um, and it's very disruptive in January, especially when we're having so many snow days and closures um, to have um, an additional three days off of school in the middle of January. Um, just again, operationally, I will leave that to you to figure out, but the, voicing my opinion on that. Um, and so I think it's pretty obvious from what I said that I prefer a pre-Labor Day start with a two-week break. Um, I do want to represent two members who are not here tonight, um, Phil Reidinger and Shannon Litton. Um, both of them have requested that we produce an August 31st option. Um, I um, told them I would raise it, and it, ultimately it's the will of the board. If that is something we would like to, um, we would like to ask the committee to produce. So I will put that out to the board. Um, I personally, I, I'm satisfied with your um, with your explanation of why there is no August 30 first option. Um, but I do want to make sure that Mr. Reining or Ms. Lydon's voices are heard tonight, and that um, we all consider that, and that I throw open to the whole board to decide if um, the will of the board is to produce a fifth option.
comments on the fifth option? Anyone, would anyone like to see an August 31st option? Um, based on the presentation this evening that Dr. Noonan shared, comfortable with the options that have been presented. 